Yo, welcome back. This is Stu42 with another very quick Minecraft video for you. Last episode, we ended up with a rather long episode. It kind of got away on me a bit. It ended up being something like 40 minutes long, uh, which is why I turned it into a playtime episode rather than a how-to episode, because it was basically me trying to figure out how to use the blast furnace. <clears throat> so on the back of that, one of the things I was getting sick of doing was coming down here and feeding my steam boiler all the time. So I have set it up to be completely automatic. So, what I've got is I've got a steez cart, well, actually, not entirely automatic. So, if we race out here first, we'll start where it starts. So, it starts out at the tree farm. Uh, we have, wherever he is, there's a cart racing around. We've got this little um, switch track here, so the train comes down here and goes along there. In there, drops its stuff off and comes back along, does a loop, and then goes back in. Pretty simple stuff there. It's the same Steve's cart that I used earlier on. Very sort of basic setup. But in here is where we've changed everything. So this is a pretty much a Greg Tech and Steve's cart setup. Uh, I really wanted to do something with Greg Tech for this. So this is what I've come up with. So we've got the cart coming in here. This is set, as you can see, I filled the bottom slots just with planks to stop it from filling up with charcoal. I don't know why it was filling up with charcoal. Uh, presumably because this transfer direction to the cart was set. Um, if I change that to the other way, you know, presumably it wouldn't um, wouldn't feed in. I've got the external distributor on the top, which we're using two of the sides for. So we're using the blue side at the back to input things in, and the whatever side that is, the green side uh, from the cart. So out the side we're from the cart. We've got two brass item pipes here. This one, if you notice very carefully, has a conveyor belt on the end of it, set to import. Uh, and that basically picks up everything from in here. Uh, apples, wood, and saplings. Puts the apples in here, the saplings in here, and the wood into this one here. These ones, of course, are set to void everything above, so they don't, they won't clog the system. This wood barrel is just a standard wood barrel. It will fill up, which it is at the moment. Uh, this one on top is just me having an extra barrel for the sake of it. Um, from this barrel, we have another two uh, brass item pipes. I'm just using the slowest pipes. There's nothing crazy about that. Um, that doesn't need to be very quick. Uh, we've got another conveyor here set to input. And we've got two basic electric furnaces. Now, I tried this with vanilla furnaces, and it wouldn't get the output properly. I tried it with steam furnaces, but it turned out there was no room for the steam to come out because we got pipes on the back. Uh, so the electric furnaces are what I've had to come up with. So as you can see, this one's banked up, and it's got 64 charcoal. This one is in the process of banking up. Now, we're running this off a cable that runs all the way back to here. Now, I found that if I use a basic steam turbine, pass it through some 4 times copper cable, it's just what I had, and then put it into ultra-low voltage transformer. Now, the ultra-low voltage transformer is set to output 8 EU per tick. Now, I'm not quite sure. I mean, these furnaces say they need 32 and they run on 32, but I'm guessing to smelt wood, they don't need that much because I actually tested this and I could run like four furnaces, maybe even five furnaces off it. So presumably this 32 gets split into multiple packets of eight, four packets of eight that can be along at any one time, and it runs these quite happily. And because I'm using the four times red eye wire, I get no loss of power no matter how long the distance. So that's one of the reasons why I cut down the voltage is just so that I could run this longer distance. So anyway, once we've got our Stuff coming in from the carts, feeding the barrels, the wood's feeding here, Char these are smelting charcoal. Out the back we have uh, just another few brass pipes. These furnaces have the orange thing selected, which basically means shove whatever output out the back. That means we don't need conveyors on the back, we can just put the pipes here. Uh, we have over the back there, you can see a slightly different brass pipe. It's a, a restrictive brass pipe. And that is just to feed the chest because most of the items or most of the charcoal needs to feed the cart first because the cart runs on charcoal now. So that just makes sure that this here is filled with charcoal all the time before it dumps it in the chest. Now, once it's dumped in the chest, we have the same setup again. Brass item pipes underneath with a pump on top. Pump set to import. That drags everything out of this chest. Pipe runs along. 
and up into the bottom of here, which as you can see is just keeping charcoal nicely full inside this, which is keeping my steam all together. So I don't have to come down here anymore. Uh, this is all done. Snedo's just online. Um, he's stoking up his blast furnace. Oh, he's gone. Right. Very fast visit from Snedo. Um, he's got one of these running at the moment, so it's taken him a while to smelt steel, so he's probably jumping on to do that. Uh, so anyway, this is all pretty much sorted. I cannot, I don't have to come down here. I can just go upstairs and worry about, you know, smelting what I need to smelt and doing what I need to do. Um, the only thing that's worth noting in this in terms of how to is if we, if we grab a wrench and a crowbar. Now, one of the things I struggled with is when you have a piece of pipe, see how the... Uh, this one here's actually got a pump on the side of it, but it's the same for those other other things. You need this crowbar to take the pump off. Now, when you put a pump on a side, you can't you can't right click to get it on any other side. It does it just doesn't work. You can't do that. So, whatever side you need this on, it means if you've got the if, let me um let me just demonstrate this for you real quick. So if we put that there, we take that off, we do that. So if we've got this in here, there's actually no way of putting the pump in there as a cover without destroying our coke oven. And the same with any of these things. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't put a pump on the side of this uh, without destroying the whole thing. And I don't want to destroy the whole thing. It took a while to get up to temperature. It's got steam inside, all that sort of stuff. So one of the things that I found you could do is if you destroy the pipe, or collect the pipe, place it out in the world anywhere where there's a space, it, then put the cover on, that cover will stay on that side no matter where you place it. So I can grab this now and if I go over here I can, you know, I can place it upwards. Pump's still on that side. I can face this way. Pump's still on that side. So that is the way that you can get these pump systems working. Uh, and this likewise with the conveyor uh, and the robotic arm as well. So that's how you can sort these out. You just have to lay the pipe out somewhere else first, break it up, and then put it into, into place. All right, so that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, very quick how-to on doing this automation. Uh, next time I will be back with, I don't know, I'll figure it out when we get there. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.